Christy Copeland. Welcome to PBS Kids Read Along. I'm going to be sharing with you a book today called Peg Plus Cat The Pizza Problem and it is by Jennifer Oxley and Billy Aronson. I chose this book because I think that it's a beautiful way of showing young people and showing everyone that you really can have fun while learning and what Peg plus Cat have done um, is to do something that they do for a job which is to make pizza at their pizza parlor uh, and to take advantage of being able to learn in those moments while still doing something that you enjoy doing. So here we go. Mama Mia, said Peg, it's a perfect day for pizza. Peg and Cap had just opened their restaurant for lunch. Peg's Pizza Place was open for cheesy, saucy business. Look, gasped Cat, here come our first customers of the day. And our coolest, said Peg. In walked Tessa, Mora, and Jess, the teens. Hi, teens, said Peg. Hi, preteen, said the teens. After seating the teens at their favorite table, Peg and Cat took their orders. I'll have a whole pizza, said Jess. One whole pie for me too, said Tessa. Half a pie for me, said Mora. What a pie, asked Peg. Half a pie, Mora answered. Peg and Cat backed into the kitchen and panicked. What in the world is half a pie? asked Peg. Why can't Mora order a whole pie like every other teenager? How can we make half a pie when we don't know what a half is? Peg and Cat had a big problem. Luckily, Ramon and Mac were there to explain. Here's a whole pizza, said Mac, and we're going to cut it into two. He pointed to one side of the pizza. That's a half. And that's a half said Ramon, pointing to the other side. There are two halves in every hole, they sang together in perfect harmony. I get it, said Peg. Each half pie is a semicircle. Peg served the teens the two and a half pizzas, singing, problem solved, the problem is solved. Want anything else, Peg asked? Yeah, said Tessa. More singing to celebrate my cousin's best friend's half birthday. She's 13 and a half. It's not every day someone turns 13 and a half, said Cat. So Peg and Cat sang and danced. Just as they were finishing their song, more customers arrived. Hey, three bears, said Peg and Cat. Hey, one Peg and one Cat, said Papa Bear. We're hungry for some of your Pegalicious pizza. Cat continued dancing to keep the teens entertained. Papa Bear ordered one pizza. Mama Bear ordered one pizza. Baby Bear ordered one pizza. And another half, said Baby Bear. So that makes one, two, three and a half pizzas, said Peg. Peg served the bears but the bears wanted Peg and Cat to do a song and dance for them too. Everybody wants just the right amount of pizza while also being entertained, said Peg. Keeping all our customers happy is going to be a really big problem. Peg took out her ukulele and started to sing. Pizza served, the pizza is served. But just as she was finishing her song, uh oh, what's gonna happen? Two more customers came in. They came into Peg's Pizza Place. It was Ludwig van Beethoven and Zebra Guy. I'll take half a pizza, said Zebra Guy. And I'll take the other half, said Beethoven. Mac chimed in. So that's one whole pizza for the two of you. Because 
There are two halves in every whole, sang Mac and Ramon. After serving Beethoven and Zebra Guy and entertaining the bears and the teens, Peg and Cat were exhausted. Finally, we could take a nice relaxing break, Peg said. We want seconds, called a chorus of voices from the dining room. Our break just broke, said Cat. The customers had eaten their pizza and were still hungry. The teens wanted to share another half pie. The three bears wanted to share another half pie. Zebra Guy wanted another half pie, and Beethoven wanted a whole pie. In the kitchen, Mac had some bad news for Peg. We only have enough ingredients to make two and a half more pizzas. But the customers just gave us four more orders, said Peg. At Peg's Pizza Place, we always keep the customers satisfied. I am totally freaking out. Cat held up his paws. Cat's right, said Mac. You should count backwards from five to calm down. Five, four, three, two, one. As Peg counted, Mac and Ramon made the last pizzas of the day. Cat cut one of those pizzas in half and was about to take a bite. That's it, said Peg. You amazing half-loving cat. Huh? asked Cat. Sing it, Peg said to Mac and Ramon. There are two halves in every hole, they sang. Though we have four orders to fill, some of the orders are for only half a pie, Peg explained so we might have enough pizza for everybody. Let's count. The teens ordered half a pie. So did the bears. And Zebra Guy, that's one and a half pies. Beethoven ordered one whole pie. If you add one to one and a half, that makes a total of two and a half pies. That's what we have. Everybody got all the pizza and entertainment they wanted, said Peg. Math keeps your customers satisfied, said Cat. And so, problem solved. The problem is solved. We solved the problem, so everything is awesome. Problem is solved. Oh, so much fun. <laughs> Um, so my, my favorite part, um, I think is when they're, they're trying to figure out how they can make sense of what they have left, um, and really utilize everything that they have. But, um, I really love how Peg and Kat, they both use their friends and their peers to, um, to bring together all of their experiences and all of their knowledge and learn from, from one another. Um, it's, it's a really amazing thing, I think, because we all use math every day, I think, in our lives. And for me as a ballerina, counting and problem solving is, is a big part of what I do. Having to memorize steps, having to know the counts to the music and and how I dance on those phrases, when to enter the stage. Um, dancing and using your mind and your body are definitely all connected to mathematics and problem solving. Reading to me means learning from other people's experiences and from other people's uh, creativity. I think it's a beautiful thing to be able to put yourself in someone else's shoes and see what, how they see things and how they experience them and then how you can relate to that. I think that's what's really fun about, about reading is being able to be adventurous and, and remove yourself from the world that you live in and enter someone else's world. Um, that's really, really fun. So I just wanted to say 
Thank you so much for joining me uh, for this PBS Kids Read Along. Happy reading!